five men of the battleship Arizona was completely destroyed and four others severely damaged. In that Sunday morning inferno, the Pacific fleet appeared to be completely immobilized by the sneak attack. Nearly 3,000 casualties added to the catastrophe. The attack on Pearl Harbor united Americans as never before in history. And the explosion at Pearl Harbor that was towards the will for complete and absolute victory over the forces of evil. For some Americans, December 7th will always mean Pearl Harbor, the attack that launched America into World War II and changed the course of world history. Today, 71 years, late, years later, service members and family gathered in Hawaii to remember the thousands killed at Pearl Harbor. And on this anniversary, we're getting a dramatic new look at the event as it unfolded, thanks to a new documentary premiering tonight on the Military Channel, which uses state-of-the-art technology as well as personal accounts to give viewers a never-before-seen look at the date that will live in infamy. The Japanese brought photographers along during both waves of the raid against Pearl Harbor. They had to be able to examine photography in the aftermath of the battle and determine whether or not the raid had been successful. Only a few stills and a few seconds of their film footage survived the war. But by looking inside these recently restored frames, we can uncover never-before-seen details of the attack. The images that are captured are now in such detail and technologically so sharp that we now can understand Pearl Harbor in a whole different light. Joining us now is Martin Morgan, an author and World War II historian who is heavily featured in the documentary Pearl Harbor Declassified, which premieres tonight on the Military Channel at 10 p.m. Eastern. Martin, how are you? Great. It's good to be here. Thank you. I've always wondered how it is, just militarily, this sneak attack, this secret attack happened, how it was carried out, how we were caught on our heels out there during World War II, which America was not in at that time, but we knew what was going on in the world. So you have new technology and new ways of looking at photographs and the film that happened from there. So in the documentary, what do we learn that we didn't know before about how this sneak attack was able to be carried out? Well, we learn things that just give a, that speak to the essence of what happened. For example, in the famous Eric Hackinson footage, the footage that captures the death of the battleship USS Arizona, we can see, for example, something we've not noticed before, which is that the explosion created a tidal wave, a tidal wave that washed up and washed over Ford Island. We can also see, for example, that the concussion was so great from the explosion of the Arizona that it forced uh, soot and coal dust out of the stack of the ship next to it, the USS Vestal. We get things like that that, that that speak to the intensity of the experience of what was going on. But in addition to that, the, the new examination of this footage, the stabilization of previously bouncy handheld, handheld footage, this all tells us very interesting things about the, the way that the Japanese carried out the attack, um, how successful the Japanese were tactically, and in addition to revealing texture to um, December 7, 1941, that we really haven't seen in its full glory before. As a historian, can you talk a little bit about how it changed America to be attacked on its own soil for the first time? I'm sure that that was just a shock to the American system. It certainly shocked the American people. This was probably the most important moment during the 20th century in American history because the United States was suddenly and, and rather violently thrust into uh, the idea of being a part of the global conflict. The war had been raging, of course, in Europe and in Asia for many years. The United States had kept out of it, and the American people could forecast a future where they were remaining out of this conflict. But after what happened in just a few short hours in the territory of Hawaii on December 7, 1941, the United States of America, um, with, with a resolve that we have not really seen since, uh, except maybe during September 11th, joined the idea and accepted the idea that we were going to be, become a, a significant part of this global conflict, and we did. Well, Martin, you mentioned, mentioned September 11th. I mean, any historical event, you can't really understand what it was like uh, to have lived at that moment unless you actually lived at that moment. But do you think that 9-11 in a way provides sort of a touchstone for younger Americans for what that felt like, what that Pearl Harbor attack would have felt like to receive the news on? I think September 11th provides the closest parallel. It, pro it provides an opportunity for people who weren't alive 71 years ago or people who've never been interested in World War II history. September 11th provides them with that opportunity to understand the import of the event. By comparing December 7, 1941 to September 11th, 2000 and 2001, young people, I believe, are able to understand just how the transformative effect of one event on the course of the nation's history.
Martin, just talking a little bit about 9-11 and its comparison, one thing that happened right almost immediately after 9-11, people started getting collecting artifacts, getting personal journals, finding out, you know, as a way of collection because they knew they were going to have a museum to plan for. And I'm just wondering, because of this footage, what's new in it that, for example, if I went to the memorial or I went to your museum in New Orleans, what, would you, what are we going to get out of this footage that would enhance that experience that perhaps we didn't have before? What this does is this, the footage, the way that it's treated in, in our documentary, uh, Pearl Harbor Disc Declassified, what we get out of it that we didn't really have before is greater context. Meaning, some of this footage, uh, we've seen it all. We've, we've seen almost everything. There's not really that much new that's in our documentary, but the way that we handle it and the resolution with which we present it is altogether different. And because of the accuracy of what we've assembled for this documentary and the way that we present it, all of this footage is suddenly placed in the proper context so that you know it's the exact camera angle that a certain individual was using when they filmed a piece of film footage or they snapped a photograph. You now know exactly where a bumpy, a, a, a jumpy piece of film footage, a piece of footage that couldn't really be placed in context before, but because of modern image stabilization techniques and video, we are now able to place it in its proper context. You can see the perspective of the individual on the ground that, that recorded this incredibly important historical moment. You know, we talk about Pearl Harbor, I think of uh, one of my favorite movies actually is Woody Allen's Radio Days, and there's this funny scene in there where this dim-witted actress played by Mia Farrow, she's doing a radio play in 1941, she gets interrupted by the news bulletin saying, Pearl Harbor's been attacked, and she goes, who's Pearl Harbor? And, and I always, it's a very funny scene, but I, it, it does strike me that it's been more than 70 years now, and I think there's always that risk of, of you know, with, with so much time, so much distance, and of course it's from a different era where there isn't, you know, you guys have restored all this footage, but there isn't the kind of maybe video record that would exist for something like that happening today. Um, I guess my question to you, Martin, is you know, looking forward to preserve Pearl Harbor for sort of all of history, what are the most important things that you think the younger generation today and, and in future generations should, should learn and should be taught about Pearl Harbor? Well, I think they should be taught first and foremost that this is one of the most important dates that the United States of America experienced during the 20th century. That this was one of the important moments of our nation's overall history because this was the moment that brought us as a combatant power into the Second World War. There's a bit of a challenge to um, expose younger people to the subject and to, to, to tell them why it's important. For me, it was extremely easy. I was, I was raised around a veteran who was at Pearl Harbor, an uncle of mine named, um, named Glenn Brazel, who was there during the attack. Mm. Um, he has since died. So as the generation recedes from living memory, it's important, and I think the imperative is on filmmakers um, to make this subject accessible to young people in an age when they're bombarded by imagery. It's, it's fascinating for me to consider how uh, 71 years ago, you didn't have a situation where people walked around with video cameras in their pockets like right. you have today. Uh, you don't see coverage like you saw of September 11th. Uh, so with just a few sources of information, with a few sources of moving imagery, we were able to piece together what I consider to be the finest Pearl Harbor documentary to date. Yeah, there's so much more which we could talk about, so many things that we learned in this fascinating piece, including that there were Americans in Hawaii who helped some of the Japanese bombers after they did this horrible bombing. Uh, which we could talk about it more. Mark Morgan, thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me on. Straight ahead, new research shows gossip is good for the office. Do you have a feeling this segment's gonna be bad news for your friendly cyclist?